Welcome to creating a driver dispatch. To create a dispatch for your driver, first you must enter the load into ITS Dispatch. To do so, you have two choices. You can either use the new active load or the new pending load. The only difference between these two functions is the new active load. You must complete all the information required before being able to save the information. Whereas the new pending load, you can save the information at any given time and then continue to update it. And then at the very end, change it from a pending load to an active load. I do suggest that you use a pending load at the beginning until you become more familiar with the program. So let's select new pending load and we're going to create a driver confirmation. To create the driver confirmation and or dispatch, first and foremost, you will enter in the customer where the driver is picking up the load for. In this case, we will simply select R and we'll come up with Rona from our database. If the customer did not exist in our system, then you will go to the green plus sign, select add, and add the customer at this point. Once the customer has been added to the database, then you will save the information and then recall the information into the correct field. Your name will appear as the dispatcher. Then if required, you will assign a sales rep to this load. Beside that, you will have the status. You'll notice at the present time it is marked as pending and it will stay at that point until you save and complete all information. You'll notice if I hit save now that the information will be saved. It will place, be placed on my dispatch board as an NA load. By simply clicking on the load number, the load edit page will now reopen. If I have an order number that my customer requires us to have on our invoice, please place it under the WO section. In this case, I will simply put in one, two, three, four, five. If my customer requires the other types of information to be shown on their invoice, you can simply go to the other numbers function, add in the information, select add a number, call it whatever the customer requires it to be called, and it will appear in your drop-down window. Once it appears in your drop-down window, then you will enter under the value section the physical number that they need to see. Then you will select where you want the information to appear. If it needs to appear on the invoice, then simply put a check mark in the box under invoice. Once you've completed this, say OK and it will be updated for you. The next line down will represent what you are charging your customer. In this case, it's going to be $2,000 that we're charging to Rona with no fees for picks and drops and no fuel, surge, fuel surcharge. It's already built into the rate. If when we deliver the load or while loading the pickup, we incur extra charges that we are going to charge back to our customer, simply to click on the dollar sign beside the other charges. This will open up the window for the other charges. And then here you will record what charges you want to charge back to your customer. You'll have a section for description and a section for dollar value. If by any chance your customer does give you an advance on this load, simply go to the advances tab under the other charges and again record when and how much they paid you and on what date. This will ensure that your billing will be done correctly. Okay, the next line down will represent the driver that's going to do this order. Simply select driver and your drivers will appear in your drop down window. Then you will select the equipment that the driver is going to need. In this case, we're going to choose a reefer. On the next section down, we will choose where the driver is going to be picking up the order. We will select Rona. If the shipping location is not in your database, simply click on the green plus sign and this will allow you to add that shipping location into your system. Ensure that you have the correct pickup dates and times on this order or the system will not organize it correctly. Then under description, print or type in a 
simple and basic description that your customer will require. Then under type, you'll enter if this is a truckload, an LTL load, pallets, loose, or anything else that you would like. In this case, we're simply going to use truckload and under quantity one because it is being a truckload. Then proceed down to your consignee. Under consignee will be the delivery location. In this case, it will be in Houston, Texas. But again, if the location was not within our database, you could always click on the green plus sign to add it. Then proceed to the date of delivery. Simply select the calendar and choose the appropriate delivery date. Once again, please make sure that you enter the correct dates and times or the system will not operate correctly for you. At this point now, we can have a choice of updating the load. So we're going to save the information so that we do not lose it. Just in case we get interrupted, I will go back into the load at this time by clicking on the load number and change the status at this time from pending to open. If there's any information that the system requires, the system will let me know at this point. So I've changed it to open and save. And you notice now that this being an IFT account, I need to enter my starting location. Okay, my starting location is based on my truck number. And at this point, I will choose from my suggested starting locations where this truck last ended. In this case, I'm going to choose Toronto and assign my trailer. Then I will select open and save. At this point, the system will be show up on my dispatch board with the appropriate load number. I can then change the status when the driver calls in and I can mark it as dispatched. Okay. I can open up the load number. ITS dispatch does have an automatic miler built into it. To access the system, simply go to the bottom left hand corner, you'll see a small calculator. Select the calculator. This will calculate the miles from starting point to pickup point to delivery point. You'll notice in this example we have 1,659 miles. If you pay your driver by percentage, you do not need to enter the information under driver miles, but it is recommended. If you do pay your driver by per mile, then at this time you will need to go into this box where it's marked driver miles and enter the number of miles that you wish to pay the driver for. This will help you and calculate the automatically for you for later on completing your driver payroll. At this point you can simply save the information and it will be once again up here on your dispatch board. If by any chance you need to send your driver a hard copy of the dispatch, simply click on the load number, go to the bottom right hand corner and select print. This will open up your driver rate confirmation. And here you will have your company name, all the basic information about the load, the load number, number of pages, the date, etc. Below that you will have your driver's name and their contact information, where they're picking up the load, where they're delivering the load, and all driver notes. You can simply email this directly to your driver or you can give them a hard copy. Okay, And that's how you create a driver confirmation within ITS Dispatch. Thank you.